Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave, and this is my daily ruling. Today's question comes to us straight out of the Judge Vault, and it's a great review of how trigger abilities work. Amy plays Flicker on her Thought Not Seer. Does Nick draw a card first or exile a card from his hand first? Okay, so if you've followed this channel for a while, you probably already know that triggered abilities do not go on the stack right away after they trigger. And that makes sense if you really think about it. After all, triggered abilities can trigger off of any game action, basically any time, including times when you probably don't want to put something new onto the stack. For example, if you're in the middle of casting a spell. On top of that, it is possible for the same game event to cause multiple triggered abilities to trigger. Obviously, multiple triggered abilities can't all go on the stack at the same time, so there needs to be some sort of a buffer between when an ability triggers and when it goes on the stack in order to resolve issues like this. The way this is handled is that anytime anything happens in the game, the game checks to see if what just happened caused any triggered abilities to trigger, and the game makes a note of any that have. Longtime fans might remember a fun analogy that I like to use for this, where the fairies who are in charge of triggered abilities write them on a whiteboard anytime they see one trigger. Anytime a player is about to get priority, the game clears the buffer. That is, it takes all the triggered abilities from the whiteboard and it puts them onto the stack. This is a good time for that to happen, because having priority means a player can cast spells. So odds are pretty good that there isn't going to be anything weird that might happen if we try and put some new stuff on the stack as a player is about to get priority. You might also know that right before the game moves the triggered abilities onto the stack, it performs state-based actions. This is a good time for state-based actions because it ensures that they get performed before a player gets priority. Also, since the state-based actions get performed before triggered abilities get moved onto the stack, any triggered abilities that trigger while the game is performing state-based actions won't have to wait around until the next time this process happens, which I think we can all agree would be pretty weird. Okay. Let's apply what we know to the question from the original problem statement. Flicker will exile a Thought Not Seer, which causes the bottom ability of it to trigger. So the fairies will write that on the whiteboard. Then Flicker returns the Thought Not Seer to the battlefield, which causes the top ability to trigger. So the fairies will write that one there too. Then, as the last step of its resolution, Flicker gets put into Amy's graveyard. Since Flicker is done resolving, the next thing is for Amy to get priority. But before that can happen, the game needs to perform state-based actions, which isn't relevant here. And then we move all the triggered abilities from the whiteboard onto the stack. So in what order do these go? Amy controls both triggers, so she gets to choose. This is an entirely free choice. She doesn't have to choose the order that corresponds to when the ability is triggered. In most situations, she would probably want to make him draw a card first so that she will be able to see and potentially exile the card that he just drew. On the other hand, there's no game reason why she couldn't exile a card and then have Nick draw afterwards. Of course, the obvious follow-up question is what would happen if Nick had a triggered ability too? Say he controlled a Bloodseeker while this happened. Well, in that case, the whiteboard would have three triggered abilities on it. Because it's Amy's turn, she takes all of her triggered abilities off the whiteboard first, putting them onto the stack in whatever order that she wants. Then each other player in turn order does likewise. Note that targets are chosen at the time when a triggered ability is put onto the stack. So if Nick had multiple triggered abilities, or if he had any that required targets, he would know both the order of Amy's abilities and what the targets of those abilities were when he was making those decisions. Finally, it's important to note that different cards have somewhat different implementations of the same sort of effect. So for example, this Kite Sail Freebooter doesn't actually have two triggered abilities like the Thought Not Seer does. It only has one. Obviously, that means the answer is going to be a little bit different if this interaction were to come up. If you'd like to know how, I made another video a short while ago on a similar topic, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. And that's all I have for you today. How did you do? Join me again next time for another Daily Ruling. Until then, I hope you have a great day.